Hello and welcome to today's video. Before we jump into things, I wanted to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Built Bar. So you guys know that I have worked with them a couple times now over the past few months and they make protein bars. So this is one of the nut ones. This is the peanut butter. So they have nut flavors and just regular flavors for those of you that may not consume nuts or may be allergic to them, whatever it may be. I really, really like these protein bars. They are made with whey protein isolate, but as you guys know, or if you're new here, you may not know, but now you know, I cannot really consume dairy, like at all. Like I'm not one of those people that's like, I'm lactose intolerant. No, like I straight up cannot have dairy. My body is just like, why are you doing this to me? And I have celiac, so it's just like, we're really rolling the dice with my immune system and my gut health but these bars do not bother me at all. So they use some of the highest quality protein sources for their way because I don't have any issues, no stomach aches, I'm not running to the bathroom. I've literally never had any issues and it's very surprising because I had to stop eating whey protein and I had to switch completely to plant-based because I was just never able to find anything. So if you're someone like me that really needs more protein in their diet, and you want to have some snacks that can give you that protein, because I know getting protein in sometimes is a little bit harder, and someone that was plant-based for about four or five years, I, I feel your pain, I really do. So definitely try them out. I'll put my coupon code on the screen so you can save some money, and I'll put my link in the description box. If you have any questions about them, definitely let me know, but I really, really like them. As a personal trainer, I actually recommend these to all of my clients because most of my clients are looking to eat a little bit more protein. And when you're first starting out, tends to be the one thing that most people struggle with. And although you can get all of your sources of protein from your diet, I do think it is nice and also just, you know, convenient sometimes to just eat a bar. So today I thought I'd take you guys through the exact first workouts for the first week of our October challenge. So we're starting off with the bench press. I'm gonna have all of the rep ranges at the very, very end of the video. So make sure you stay tuned to that if you do wanna follow the workout to a T. These rep ranges will be changing the next three weeks, but these are the exact ranges that you'll see in that first week of the challenge. So we have the bench press, just a full setup. I do use a slight arch, you don't have to, just helps me protect my shoulders. You wanna make sure you're keeping your wrists straight and you're actually bringing the bar down towards your chest and back up towards kind of your eye line. So you can also do this with dumbbells. Um, everything in this challenge can be done with dumbbells. So I did give you guys the option for that and you'll see some demonstrations of some alternatives that you guys can do. So with this is the same exact thing. You are just flaring your elbows a little bit more and bringing the dumbbells just about as far down as you would in your typical barbell press and I just drop them. It's like the safest way for me to kind of get rid of them. We then have the tricep push down, or you can do the double tricep kickback. So with this, you just wanna make sure that you are never locking out your elbows, and you wanna make sure you're feeling this in your tricep. So that is the muscle group basically behind and lower down the shoulder on your arm. So you can actually see me flex it during the movement, and you'll see I kind of stop at the top for a second, let myself feel my tricep, and then come down and that's really where the contraction is at the very bottom but you want to keep this nice and steady same goes for the kickback i recommend everybody starting with the kickback um, if you can and you do have dumbbells available it's just a lot easier to understand the movement pattern it's basically the same as standing up except obviously you're using dumbbells and you're leaning forward instead of standing up straight we then have the bicep curls so for these i like to use the rope I extend all the way to the bottom, squeezing my tricep, and then back at the top, squeezing my bicep so I get a nice full extension. Just think of pinning your elbows to your sides, and that will help you without swinging or using any of your momentum during the movement. Same goes for the regular dumbbell bicep curls. You can also do a hammer curl. You can do an alternating curl, whatever is easiest for you, but I find this is one of the hardest bicep curl um, movements that you can do. So I like to challenge myself sometimes with this, just keeping my elbows pinned to my side as well. And you can always do those seated too. Just keep in mind seated is always going to be a little bit harder. 
We then have the upright row. You can use a barbell, dumbbells, or even a easy bar or curl bar for this. You just wanna make sure that you're keeping those dumbbells in front of you and you're going up basically to your chest line. You don't wanna go any higher than that because you're gonna start using different muscle groups. And then we also have the Russian twist. Uh, two ways to do this. You can do it unassisted like I'm doing here. You don't have to use weight or anything like that. These are just timed or you can do it assisted with your feet on the ground, just focusing on contracting your obliques as you do your twist. Moving on to day two, we're starting off with some barbell squats. You can also opt to do dumbbell squats if you're not comfortable with that. You can also use machines if you have you know, a squat machine or anything like that. You can totally do that as well. You can do box squats, whatever you wanna do. I usually do barbell squats, which is most comfortable for me. So as you can see, I did my full walkout. So I like to set my feet, set my arms. I'm in a low bar position and then walk out. Uh, make sure you're always bracing by pushing your stomach out uh, every single time you squat. So here's just a full breakdown now that you can take a look at so you can see it kind of all together in one. I do have my feet slightly pointed outwards, but for myself, my body type, and the length of my legs in comparison to my torso, um, I do do more of a front facing toe placement, always keeping your knees in a line with your toes, um, activating a little bit more of my quads. So this is just a dumbbell squat variation that you can do. Uh, you'll see I'm still in a pretty wider than shoulder width stance here. And up next, you will actually be seeing the goblet squat, which you'll actually see me bring my feet in a little bit more and have my toes pointed more so forwards. So in this position, you're gonna be activating your glutes more, whereas in the goblet squat, you're actually gonna be activating your quads more, and that's just due to your knees traveling backwards versus forwards. So in a regular squat, when you're trying to activate your glutes, your knees are actually tracking more backwards and you're using more of your glutes when you're coming out of the hole versus in goblet squat, your knees are actually tracking forward, allowing you to activate your quads more and take your glutes out of the movement. So just keep in mind, they look very similar, but that is kind of the difference and you will feel it when you focus on the knee kind of travel path, if that makes sense. Um, if you guys have any questions about that, definitely let me know in the comments or you can join the community tab inside of the challenge and you can just drop a comment there. I'm sure I'll have like a little question box if you guys have any questions. We then have the hip thrusts. So you can use dumbbell, barbell, Smith machine, whatever you like for this. I personally like to use the dumbbells, but I actually keep the dumbbell more so on the top of my quads instead of on top of my pelvis. It's just a little bit more comfortable and it helps me feel it a little bit more in my glutes. So just make sure that you have your toes pointed forward and you are keeping your knees in line with your shins as you are rising to the top. We then have everybody's favorite single leg deadlift. I do have an alternate version for you guys. If you do not have the greatest balance, all you have to do is put your foot up against either a wall or some object that's not gonna move around. And then you're just going to shift your hips backwards like you would in a Romanian deadlift and fall forward towards your toes so that you can activate your hamstrings. Next, we have an ab exercise. You guys will see mostly abs at the very end of these workout days. Um, and it's just the bird dog. So this was actually pretty easy. It looks kind of difficult, but it's easier than you'd think. Just keep it nice and slow. You want to think of reaching with your arm in front and kicking back with your foot. That will help you contract your abs and kind of reset if you can in between each rep if you feel like your abs are not doing a lot of the work anymore. Moving on to day three, we're starting out with some push-ups. You can actually opt for close grip knee push-ups if you'd like or just regular knee push-ups if you'd like or regular push-ups. I personally like close grips. It's a little bit easier for me. Um, you just want to make sure you're keeping all the pressure kind of on the balls of your hands and keeping your fingertips almost pointed on the floor. That will really help you um, excel at push-ups a little bit quicker. And then we have the lat pull-down or the dumbbell lat pullover if you don't have a lat pull-down machine. With this, you want to think of squeezing your shoulder blades as you bring the bar down, and that will help you activate your lats, which is that giant muscle group 
speaking outside of the sports bra that I'm wearing. Um, so just keep it nice and controlled. You don't want to swing. You never want to feel this in your abs. If you are, you're leaning back way too far. You want to keep your core tight so that you keep your lower back and your abs out of the movement. For the dumbbell lat pullover, essentially you're just going to take the dumbbell, pull it over your head, and then just pull it back to about the midline of your chest, kind of where you would bring the bar down if you were doing a bench press. So with this, you're naturally going to have an arch, so don't worry too much about that. Um, it's naturally going to happen just when you lie down. It helps you activate your lats more, and you're simply just squeezing your lats as you bring the dumbbell towards your chest. We then have the step-ups. So step-ups are one of my favorites. You just want to make sure you're not pushing off of the floor with that foot that is on the ground. You're actually pushing into the foot in front of you. If you want to feel it more in your glutes, I recommend having your heel off of whatever object you're using. And if you want to feel it more in your quads, then just have it completely on top of the object. We then have the hip abduction machine. You guys can also use dumbbells, plates, cables, whatever you want for this one. I prefer this machine. I like to stay upright. It helps me just activate my adductors more. And just keep in mind, this is actually not activating your glutes at all. Your adductors are a completely different muscle group from the glutes. Everyone calls it the side glutes, but it's actually a completely different muscle group. So just something to keep in mind while doing that. And then our ab exercise of the day is going to be the hanging leg raises. So for these, you need a little bit of lat strength. So if you do not have that, I recommend actually lying on the ground and just doing alternating leg raises. And we do have a video of that inside of the challenge when you go through the days and you can see the exercise database for that. So moving on to our last day, which is day four, we have our glute bridge. So the one thing I recommend doing before you start this movement is just tucking in your pelvis a little bit, which is essentially just bringing your back down flat to the floor and then starting the movement. That will take out any quad recruitment that you might be using if your glutes aren't as strong, and it also helps you activate your hamstrings. So this is more of a complicated movement, definitely feels like cardio, so I'm just warning you now, but it is just a squat to back lunges and doing all three equals one rep. So for the squat, I have my toes pointed outwards so I can activate my glutes more. And then for my lunge, I actually point my toes completely forward and then I lunge. So you'll see me reset in between every single rep so that I'm activating the muscle groups that I want. If you do want to activate more of your glutes in that lunge, just take a longer stride and basically rise with your hips leading and your knees tracking backwards instead of forwards like you would to activate your quads. And you always want to make sure that you have your knees going in the same direction as your toes in every single one of these movements. We then have the split squat, not the Bulgarian split squat, it's just the regular split squat. This one can be a little bit hard on your knees, so if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of muscle mass around that area, I do recommend opting for this deficit lunge. Um, essentially, you're just going to create a deficit by just being a little bit off of the ground and then just doing your reverse lunge like usual. This also surprisingly helps a lot with balance because you're able to put your foot back on the top there in between um, if you are someone who struggles a little bit with balance. Then last but not least for the glute exercise, we have the Romanian deadlift. This is actually going to activate your glutes and your hamstrings. So what you want to do is you want to push your hips back until you basically feel like you're falling over and you're going to start bending your knees more exaggerated anywhere from the top of your knees to your shins, depending upon your arm length and your leg length. It's really just try it out. See when you start to feel it more in the under part of your glute. You'll be feeling this underneath your glutes where your hamstrings begin. And then we're finishing off with this commando plank. I apologize. I only did like three of these. Um, I am actually flat. <laughs> it's really just my butt. But just keep in mind, you kind of want to be pretty flat like you would be in a plank. Um, I was having some back pain, so I couldn't do too many of those to demonstrate it. But Hopefully you guys get the point with that one, and I do have a better video inside of the site. So I'm just taking you through the site here so you can see um, the way that we have the challenge set up. You can actually purchase a one-on-one -on -one package if you would like to up until October 6th. 
We do actually start on Monday, but you can join the challenge until October 6th, which is next Wednesday. If you are interested, you have plenty of time to still join. Uh, we're actually done doing customized meal plans, but we do have meal plans that you guys can use. They'll be updated every single week. You can actually click on all of the recipes and it'll take you straight to that recipe part. So definitely download them when you get in the site. You're yours to keep. Uh, there's grocery lists and the calories are around about 1800 to 2000 every single week for that as well. We do have the video exercise demonstrations if you need help with that and lots more. So definitely check it out if you are interested. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, like, subscribe. Follow me on my Instagram, and I'll see you guys in the next one.